Welcome to the Shepherd's Chapel Network Family Bible Study Hour with Pastor Arnold Murray. Wisdom is understanding God's Word. Pastor Murray's unique teaching approach brings God's Word alive with meaning as he takes you on a chapter-by-chapter, verse-by-verse study of God's letter to you, the Bible. And now here is Pastor Arnold Murray. Good day to you. God bless you. Say welcome to the Shepherd's Chapel. Welcome to this family Bible study hour back in our Father's Word, Book of Luke, the Light Giver. It is from Him that we can receive that light that is so precious. It's the truth. It's God's Word. It's what gives us the ability to serve Him and to do it correctly because you're informed through the Word itself. That last chapter we covered concerning where the dead are, the fact that they're all in paradise, but they are divided in two groups. One group that took part in the first resurrection, and a second group that are on the opposite side of, the, of paradise, and maybe they'll make the second resurrection, maybe they won't. If they don't, they're going to hell. So that's the way it is, and a lot of people, it gets re they get real edgy because they, you mean sinners are in paradise? Yeah, and, but they're not happy. They're there. Who do you think does the judging? Well, God does, of course. Then you've got to go to God to be judged, right? So that's where they are. They're awaiting judgment. And so it is. Um, so what a fantastic chapter it was to know how Christ lets us know these things beforehand, whereby there's no anxiety about it. The truth always sets you free. Why? Because you know, and that's what's important. Let's get to a new chapter, chapter 17, verse 1, and a word of wisdom from our Father, and it reads, Then said he unto his disciples, pay attention to who he's talking to, not a multitude, but his, his disciples, it is impossible, but that offenses will come. That's stumbling blocks but woe unto him through whom they come. In other words, it's inevitable. That you're, you're, anytime you think that you're going to just go into the sweet by and by and everything is roses and it's a garden of God, you, you, yeah, it is. But Christ walked the earth and what happened to him? They crucified him. They, they derided him. And if you teach his word, uh, they're going to deride you also, and that's fine. God will take care of it. You don't have to worry. They'll suffer for it. Why? Verse 2. It were better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck and he cast into the sea than that he should offend one of these little ones. That is to say, these um, uh, noble ones that serve God. It, it, God keeps score. We, this is why you don't judge. You don't need to. We have a judge. And, and our Father, though it is impossible, He says, touch not mine anointed. And that's exactly what He meant. You have to be about your Father's work, and his father, the Father's work is ever important. It saves souls. It changes lives. Verse 3, take heed, that's warning, take heed to yourselves, if thy brother trespass or sin against thee, rebuke him. And if he repent, forgive him. That is the beauty of Christianity. Naturally, if, if a brother, uh, uh, if he misuses you or abuses you or sins against you, then don't just sit there peacefully and say, well, it's just my brother. No, rebuke him. That's the way he learns, is to know he did offend you. Because if he doesn't take your rebuke, God will get around to it, and boy, will he suffer then, your own brother. So it's better that he take your rebuke than have to take God's rebuke, because it would be very serious then. But if the beauty of Christianity, if he repents, forgive him. It's over, done with. Well, what if he doesn't repent? Well, then don't forgive him. Continue rebuking. Verse 4, And if he trespass against thee seven times in a day, 
and seven times in a day turn again to thee, saying, I repent, thou shalt forgive him. In Matthew chapter 18, verses 21 and 22, it even says seven times 70. That's 490 times. If, but it takes, uh, what is repentance? It's a change of heart and mind. They got to mean it. You cannot con God. And really, you shouldn't, you know, maybe once or twice you can be con, but after that, no more. Okay. You wise up to it. But still at the same time, it's the beauty of Christianity for each and every one of us. We all fall short at one time or the other. And repentance and forgiveness is the beauty of Christianity. It is erased. It is gone. It doesn't exist any longer. If, if it has been repented for, and there you have it, verse 5. And the apostles said unto him, uh, said unto the Lord, increase our faith. And he, uh, well, how do you do that? Well, he teaches them a little lesson, but remember the subject here is how you increase faith. Let's go with it. Verse 6, And the Lord said, he's going to use a parable, If ye had faith as the grain of a mustard seed, you might say unto this sycamine tree, it's a, sick, it's a mulberry bush is what it is, okay, Be thou plucked up by the root, and be thou planted in the sea, and it should obey you. Now, I want you to know when he says you might say, this puts it purely hypothetical, okay. meaning that uh, you could measure your faith by that in another place where there was a mountain there and he spoke to the mountain, which would be a nation. But here he had a mulberry tree. Have you ever had a mulberry tree? It's a fantastic tree to own. The fruit that it produces draws every fowl in your area. They love it. They love a wild merryberry tree, and um, they'll roost in it, feed from it. Okay. Verse 7, But which of you, having a servant, plowing or feeding cattle, will say unto him by and by, when he has come from the field, go and sit down to meet. You go on in there, you cool yourself, you sit down, and I will come and serve you. Now, remember, though, it's the other way around. The person is paying him and has him hired to do certain things. And certainly the hiree is, the, the, is responsible. And let's see what happens then. Verse 8. And will not rather say unto him, to the servant, Make ready wherewith I may sup, and gird thyself, and serve me first, till I have eaten and drunken, and afterward thou shalt eat and drink. In other words, that, that's what you expect. That's just as common as can be. Verse 9, Doth he thank that servant because he did the things that were commanded him? I throw not. I, I think not. Well, why, why wouldn't he? Well, verse 10, so likewise ye, when you shall have done all those things which are commanded you, saying, We, have un we are unprofitable servants, uh, we have done that which was our duty to do. In other words, unprofitable, why? Because it's doing what was expected, no merit, no profit, okay? It's, um, uh, that's just the way it is. In other words, it was in the contract. So uh, that's what you can expect. Now, then how could that increase your faith? Well, the faith comes from hearing the Word of God. Remember how you really, that being the subject, we go to um, Romans chapter 10, verse 17. You want to really know? Listen to it. So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. That's how faith comes. Faith comes from being able to hear with understanding the Word of Christ. He said, you, it's not going to increase your faith 
But by doing what is expected of you from God's word, following his command and doing it to the letter, that is the word of God is to complete that, then that also increases your faith and your understanding. Um, it is impossible for one not to have stumbling blocks in his or her life, but God knows that and you can expect it, but you can cut it. Why? Because you're one of God's elect. From whom, whom God gives much, he expects much. So then here you have this faith and it is, um, if you just had just that little bit of faith, then what do you do? You do the regular things, but you ask our Father. You hear Him. You hear Him how? In His Word. And in His Word, your faith is increased and the blessings flow and you're a far better off citizen. Uh, so there it is. They... Um, would ask for faith. And what is the moral to this? Faith comes by obeying the Word of God. Well, how could faith come by obeying the Word of God? Because when you obey God, He blesses you and that does strengthen your faith, if you have any common sense at all. Verse 11, And it came to pass as He went to Jerusalem that He passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee, now, I understand where we are. We're, we're up in the north country here, up in Samaria and near, and near Galilee, 12. And as he entered into a certain village, there met him ten men that were lepers, which stood afar off. They had to be a hundred paces. That was legal. That was law so that the leprosy would not spread. Ten of them. Verse 13, and they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. Now, what have they done here? They did not say, Jesus, could you heal us? No, they said, have mercy on us. That shows that they had faith in him. Your faith is what makes you whole. They knew and had all the faith in the world that he could say the word and they would be healed. That's why they asked for the love, the mercy. Verse 14, And when he saw them, he said unto them, Go show yourselves unto the priest, and it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. Now, what he's doing here in, in this particular verse is, is he's quoting or going by Leviticus 14.4, where, where what you do to heal leprosy, in part, I'll, summer, I'll shorten it, is you take two sparrows, two birds, and you kill one bird and place the blood of that bird on the other and free him, let him go. And that was part of the method of cleansing or paying for a leprosy, but it all looked forward to the fact that Christ, his blood was going to be shed on the cross, and you can go free if you have the faith, if you have the knowledge and wisdom to, and hearing to, hear, to know that faith, to, to practice it, then certainly that blood of Christ sets you free. That's what it symbolizes. But listen carefully, 15. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back and with a loud voice glorified God. He praised God. Don't ever forget to do that. I, I mean, God has feelings and he loves you. And when you take time out to thank him and glorify him, it pays great dividends. Verse 16, And he fell down on his face at his feet, giving thanks, and he was a Samaritan. He wasn't even an Israelite. They were in Samaria. This was a Samaritan. 
quite frankly, they were there were hard feelings between Samaritans and Israelites. Uh, have for years and years, 17. And Jesus answering said, were there not 10 cleansed? But where are the nine? Where did the others go? They, they were making, they were so happy, they were cleansed, they were headed to and obeying what he had said, but they left out a very important part. Verse 13, 18. There are not found that return to give glory to God save this stranger. This word stranger is allogenous, which is, allo is uh, other, uh, another race, another people. A person of another race, only he came back to glorify God. That that documents whomsoever will in loving Almighty God and receiving the cleansing thereof. Verse 19, and he said unto him, Arise, go thy way, thy faith, there, there is what? Thy faith hath made thee whole. And so it is. Verse 20, and when he was demanded of the Pharisees when the kingdom of God should come, he answered them and said, The kingdom of God cometh not with observation. Um, this, this word um, uh, observation means hostile watching. It, uh, well, he was standing right before them, right in their midst. 21. Neither shall they say, Lo here, are low there, for behold, the kingdom of God is within you. Uh, the, the correct translation is, it's a, he's in the midst of you. He was standing there. Christ was. Verse 22, And he said unto the disciples, who are we talking to again here? The disciples. The days will come when you shall desire to see one of the days of the Son of Man, and you shall not see it. There's one of the days coming that you're going to wish you could see Jesus Christ in the flesh walking this earth, and you're not going to see it. Why? He's going to be crucified and transfigured. 23, and they shall say to you, see here or see there, go not after them nor follow them. And of course, this looks on past the resurrection to the false Messiah being here on earth. They're going to tell you he's over here, he's over there. Hey, do not go. 24, for as the lightning that lighteth out of the one part under heaven shineth unto the other part under heaven, so shall also the Son of Man be in his day. On, well, what's his day? Well, how long is a day with the Lord? 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 7 through 8. A day with the Lord, be not ignorant of the fact, is a thousand of our years. It's the millennium. That is the Lord's day. And uh, that's where we will see him. Because at his second uh, uh, advent, that begins the first day of the millennium. But don't go there until that, don't, don't go in the field to worship someone until the true Christ returns. That's what he's saying here. Verse 25. But first must he suffer many things be rejected of this generation. 26. And as it was in the days of Noah, that's Noah, so shall it also, so, so, so shall it be also in the days of the Son of Man. Well, well, what were they doing in the days of Noah? Well, 27. They did eat, they drank. They married wives, the fallen angels married the daughters of Adam until the day that Noah entered into the ark and the flood came and destroyed them all. In other words, until Noah took two of every flesh aboard the ark, his own generation being perfect, his wife, his sons and their wives, and taking all these own, and the geber that were born naturally were drowned, done away with. God's law put back in an own course for the, for the coming of Messiah. 28, likewise, also as it was in the days of Lot. They did eat, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted. This means false doctrine, even they planted. They, they builded, 
And, and it was not natural. And anytime something is not natural, God is not pleased with it at all. So what happened? 29. But the same day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. That's something God will not tolerate. Sodom and Gomorrah. Verse 30. Even thus shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. That's the way it's going to be at the end. Why? The fallen angels are coming back again. 31. In that day, he which shall be upon the housetop and his stuff in the house, let him not come down to take it away, that's to say his stuff, and he that is in the field, let him likewise not return back. Why, you're not going to need a change of clothes. The end is here. That's what it's referring to. 32, remember Lot's wife. Well, what'd she do? She turned and looked back, kind of wanted to go back to Sodom and Gomorrah. And God struck her dead. 33, whosoever shall seek to save his life shall lose it. She did. She lost it. And whosoever shall lose his life shall preserve it. In other words, you're going to make a stand against the false one, as it is written in Mark 13 when you're delivered up. You're going to make that stand. You're going to not only save your life, but thousands of others when the Holy Spirit speaks through you. 34, I tell you, in that night, there shall be two men in one bed. The one shall be taken and the other shall be left. And, you know, I've heard a lot of people say, well, uh, mercy, I, I sure want to be one of those first ones taken. Don't show your ignorance. What was the subject back in verse 23? They're going to say to you, see here and go see there. Don't go and don't follow them. Why? Because it's false. It's the Antichrist. And, and uh, that's why you're not going to go. I've heard many, I've heard many preachers preach a sermon on, I want to be that first taken. And whether it be from Matthew 24, Mark 13, or even Luke 21, when we get to this 21st chapter, we'll go into much more detail on this. And this misleads whole congregations because the one taking is the Antichrist. None other than the Antichrist himself in deception and deceit from false teaching did it not say that they're going, that they planted, they planted false doctrine? You don't have to read God's word. You're going to be gone. You ever heard that? Uh, you probably heard, if you heard it, you probably heard it from a church. Unfortunately, don't be the first one taken. They're taken by the Antichrist. You're supposed to stay in the field working, doing God's work until the second advent. That's until we're all changed into spiritual bodies and the true Christ returns. Don't ever let anyone deceive you. There are two tribulations. The tribulation of the Antichrist and then the tribulation of Almighty God. You don't have to worry about either one of them. You have a destiny and a purpose for the tribulation of Antichrist. Why? Did we not read back in chapter 10 verse 19 that God gave us power? to tread upon our enemies, not just to have power over them, but to tread on them, stomp on them, do them in. That's what uh, he expects us to do, spiritually speaking. And so it is, do not be deceived and do not listen to false doctrine. You have work to do for our Heavenly Father. See that you remain in that field working, for blessed are those that continue in God's word and are not deceived. Okay, let's go one more verse, please. Two women shall be grinding together. The one shall be taken and the other left. In other words, this, this uh, refers to uh, threshing or grinding, preparing food, corn. And right there working, one of them taken. Oh, I want to be that first one taken. No, you don't. You, you, would be very, you would be deceived, misguided, and certainly would... Um, be in bad shape. Verse 36, two men shall be in the field. 
the one shall be taken and the other left. Again, back to 23. What did it say in 23? How soon some people forget. Do you have faith by hearing the word of God? What did the word of God say back in 23? And they shall say to you, see here or see there, go not after them nor follow them. Why? It's false doctrine. It's the Antichrist picking them off. Why? Because they haven't studied God's word to show themselves approved, rightly dividing that word, whereby they have the faith from hearing the word of God to know what's happening. It is so ever important to read the word and not listen to man, this man or any other man, without checking it out chapter by chapter and verse by verse. Um, so there you have it. Verse 37, what did he say then? And they answered and said unto him, Where, Lord? Question. And he said unto them, Wheresoever the body is, thither will the eagles be gathered together. Uh, there is a time element here that is extremely important. And uh, Luke kind of leaves it hanging here, but, but um, Matthew did it up real good uh, in, um, in his, his work on this. In the 24th chapter, which I told you, told of the same marriages between Noah and his daughters and the fallen angels. In Matthew 24, 28, I want you to remember, it isn't eagles, it's vultures. Wherever the carcass is, that's where the vultures come. That's human nature. That, that's, that's, the way, that's the way they um, operate. So we go with, to Matthew 24, you're not going to have it, but uh, verse 28. Listen carefully and pick up on the time sequence. We, we've been, he's been talking about that same deception, the false Christ coming first, you being delivered up before it. And then he says in that 28th verse of Matthew 24, for, who's, for wheresoever the carcass is, there shall the eagles be gathered together, or the, the, the vultures is what the proper translation. What is the sequence then? Verse 29 of Matthew 24. Immediately after the tribulation of those days. Well, what tribulation was that? The Antichrist. Immediately after that first tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light and the stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of the heaven shall be shaken. And then and not until then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in, he in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he shall send his angels with great sound of a trumpet. That's the last one. And they shall gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. And so it is. And then after that, he said, learn the parable of the fig tree. Keep your sequence correct, my friend. There are two tribulations. Do not be deceived in these end times. We live in a time where many, when the false Messiah appears, who does he claim to be? Do you think he's going to say, I am the false Messiah come to earth to deceive men? That's not what he's going to say. He's going to say, I am the Lord Jesus Christ. I am the true Messiah. I have come to this earth to save souls. Bring all your children to me. Oh, what a flood that's going to be. Because people are not equipped. Why? Well, why aren't they equipped? They haven't really studied God's word properly. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. And God says there's two tribulations. Don't get caught up in the first one. That's the tribulation of the false Messiah claiming to be Messiah. You don't want to go there, my friend, because that gets you a ticket straight to hell. How, how would you feel? I mean, a good Christian, how would you feel if when he comes saying, I'm come to fly you out of here to rapture you away? And 
and you go with him, and then you look, and here comes the true Messiah. What are you going to say? You've gone to church all your life. You sit on a church pew. You've heard the so-called word taught, maybe one verse and an hour of this, that, or the other, but never into the facts of chapter by chapter and verse by verse of exactly how it's going down. And here, you really wanted to do what's right. And now you've got to face the true Christ, and you've been a Satan worshiper. You have absolutely worshiped Satan. And how are you going to face the true Christ? What a shame. What degradation. Can you better understand now why it's written in Revelation 9 that those churchgoers that are deceived are going to pray for the mountains to fall on them? Because they've been had? They're too ashamed to face the Lord Jesus Christ. Why, they love Him. But they've been had because they listened to man rather than hearing the Word of God, chapter by chapter and verse by verse. The letter that God sent to them in the form of this Word, warning them, when they say He's here and when they say He's there, do not follow them. This one's taken first and that one's taken first. They were taken by Satan. See that you don't go there. This is a very serious thing in this generation because this is the generation it's going to happen to. Well, how can you say that? Well, if we had kept reading in Matthew 24, you would have found that you should know the parable of the fig tree. The fig tree is this generation. We are the generation of the fig tree in which all prophecy comes to pass. I don't know how you fixed. How you fixed in prophecy? How are you fixed for hearing your faith comes by hearing the Word of God? Have you heard it? Think about it. All right, bless your heart. You listen a moment, won't you please? The Mark of the Beast on CD is our free introductory offer to you. What is the Mark of the Beast? Many false teachers would have you believe it will be a tattoo on your forehead or a computer chip implanted under your skin. It is getting late in the game. You need to know what the Mark of the Beast is. As it's written in Revelation chapter 13, verse 8, many will be deceived. There is no need for you to be deceived. Christ said in Mark 13, 23, Behold, I have foretold you all things. Jesus indeed told us how not to be deceived, and Pastor Arnold Murray takes you on a step-by-step -step study of God's Word concerning this critical subject, the mark of the beast. The telephone call is free. The CD is free. We don't even ask for the shipping and handling. It is free as well. All you need to do is call 800-643-4645 to request your one-time, one-per-household copy of The Mark of the Beast. You may also request your free CD by mailing your request to Shepherd's Chapel, Post Office Box 416, Gravit, Arkansas, 72736. Don't be deceived by Satan. And there we are back again. Let's have the 800 number, please. 1-800-643-4645. That number is good from Puerto Rico, throughout the U.S., Alaska, Hawaii, and all over Canada. If the Spirit moves and you have a question, you share it. Once you do that, please never ask a question about a particular reverend or denomination. We do not judge people. We have one judge. It's our Father. He does not need our help in that. Discernment, a gift from God. Helping you spot that that is false, that that is uh, not true, and helping you follow that path that leads straight to our Father's kingdom right here on heaven, to, in, on earth today, and, and with Him in heaven forever and eternity. What a time to live at this time when we see all these prophecies building, smoldering, and folding as the barometer of, of, of prophecy boils to that point where it, we know our Father's on the throne, everything is well. Those of you that listen by shortwave around the world, it's always a pleasure hearing from you and your announcer at the end of the hour will give you our mailing address, got a prayer request, you don't need the number, you don't need an address, why God knows what you're thinking. You know something, He created you different than anyone else. Your DNA is different, fingerprints are different, you're unique. You know why He wanted someone like you? but he wants you to love him. He wants you to read the letter he's written to you, explaining to you what strengthens your faith and sees you through this, this um, 
trip that we make here in these flesh bodies, being able to handle any stumbling block that would come in your life. Why? Because you got him. Father, around the globe we come, we ask that you lead, guide, direct, Father, touch in Yeshua's precious name. Thank you, Father. Amen. Okay, and question time. Uh, Beverly from Florida, what does the word Le Leviathan mean? I've only heard one preacher talk about it, and he said it refers to the devil. Well, it does. It means in the place of, it can be a, the croco a crocodile of the old Nile with his scales as it's utilized in Job, symbolic of the devil. Uh, and um, it, 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 it can mean serpent, which is one of his names. It is Satan, and it has to do with Satan, and the pastor you heard say that was speaking correctly. Okay, this would be Bob from Ohio. Can you tell us something biblically about the sand dollar? Bob from Ohio. There is nothing written biblically about the sand dollar. The sand dollar is a crustacean. It's a, it's a small, round uh, crustacean that um, is um, of marine life, and as far as I know, it is not mentioned in God's Word. I know that some people like to say things. The fish that had the coin in his mouth was an actual coin. It wasn't a sand dollar. Frank from California, Pastor Murray, I enjoy your program. Well, thank you. In Genesis, it says that be beings came down from above and married the beautiful women on earth, um, Adam's daughters, yeah. Does this mean that there are alien beings, uh, unidentified objects? No, they, we know who they were. Well, they're not unidentified. They're the fallen angels. And, you know, you can read of them again in Jude, right before the great book of Revelation, from about verse 4 through 6, where their sin is that they, they're in chains to, for destruction. They blew it. When, when they refused to be born of woman, but rather came down and seduced woman, they have, they're, they're already judged. They're going to die. And uh, there are 7,000 of them, and they die in the streets of Jerusalem, as it is written in Revelation chapter 11. Uh, Red from Michigan just wondered where the elect go after we've tried changing a loved one's heart that didn't make it on the right side uh, uh, in in the millennium, I know there is a cleansing period. Is there a place somewhere in the middle of to be cleansed? No, it, it, you go to your regular place, but the point is you cannot go in Christ's presence for seven days. It doesn't mean you got to disappear, or go away, or anything. It's just that you, you must. You have touched the dead. That means the moral, morally dead. They're your own relatives. You've tried to help them, but that means touching the dead, somebody that's liable to die. You're trying to help them, and you must spend that five days, uh, seven days rather, away from the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ through the millennium. That, that's no biggie. That's, that's, uh, that's good. It's, you know, that shows that you love your family, even those that messed up. You have a chance to help them. Uh, Ed from California. What exactly is a polysendenton? Thank you for your wonderful church. Well, you're so welcome. We thank our Father for it. Uh, polysendenton is, is the, usually, let's say that it in the Genesis chapter 1, the polysendenton used there is the word and, A-N-D. What it means is every time the word is used, there is a lot more said than what the word itself means. It means like example, and the Lord God Almighty moved upon the earth and this happened. And the Lord God Almighty moved and that happened. It's only the word and, but it's a polysendent and where you have to add the other. It means the presence of God. Where something is written and a lot more is meant, okay? Jesse from South Carolina. If Adam and Eve were the first people on earth, then where did all the different nationalities come from? Well, naturally, they weren't the first people on earth, and God created all the nationalities on the sixth day, and he looked, and it was good. He loves them, and that's why they're here today. 
It amazes me that we know scientifically through, um, I mean, biologically, that not all people could come from two people because one, we're different people. We're a los, uh, as we, a los genus, as we use that word today in Luke. Different races, different people. And that's, that is not something that we have to worry about. That God loves it. God created us that way because he wanted us that, that way. And he looked and it was good. So you respect each race with dignity that deserves it. Okay. Milton from Illinois. I was reading something that said there were no souls in hellfire today. Is that true? Well, it's true because there is no hellfire today. There is no hellfire until the last day of the millennium. It is known as the second death. It is not fire as we think of fire today, for God is a consuming fire. God spoke and nothing became everything, and God will speak and some things will become nothing. Uh, and the lake of fire will consume, and, uh, and so it will be. That is known in Revelation chapter 20 as the second death, and it will transpire there. But that, unfortunately, every time the word hell is translated in the King James Bible, it either comes from Hades, Suel, or Supplica, or Gehenna in the Greek, which is a garbage pit outside of Jerusalem. That, that's all the manuscripts say but it's translated H-E-L-L, -L, hell. And hell doesn't exist yet. The grave does, but not hell. Why? Well, they're, they're in their spiritual bodies in paradise waiting judgment. You can't go to, the great white throne judgment doesn't happen until the last day of the millennium. How could somebody already be in hell if they hadn't been judged yet? That, that would be very unfair, would it not? And our father is always fair. Dennis from Cal, uh, California. In Leviticus 11, it lists the unclean foods. In Timothy chapter 4, verse 4, is that saying that it's okay to eat the unclean food? No, no. You have to pick up the subject, okay? You got to go back to verse 3. 4, 3. Don't let anyone judge you in marriage, and don't let anyone judge you in eating for that that God created to be received. Now, God did not create scavengers to be received. He created scavengers to cleanse this earth, and that is good. All animals are good for what God created them for. But uh, go back and read that verse 3 and follow your subject. Don't get ahead of the game. They're not. They will make you sick if you eat them. Uh, God created these bodies and he gave us instructions on what kind of keeps them healthy and thank God for that. And when you follow his um, instructions, even though we have a lot of pollution in the world today and yeah, it takes its toll and flesh bodies age, wither, get diseased, but uh, when you follow God's orders and eat as he tells you to, you're a lot healthier. Uh, Kanda Kanda from um, North Carolina. I have never believed in the rapture, but there are many people around me who do. They always refer me to 1 Thessalonians 4.17, and I always refer them back to verse 13, which is the subject, good. But I need exact explanation for verse 17. Is that the time when Jesus comes and we are all instantly changed into spiritual bodies? Yes. The word air gives you, believe it or not, this is what confuses most people. But the word air there is breath of life, and it means in your breath of life body, spiritual body. And um, check it out. It's uh, 109 in the Greek dictionary in your Strong's Concordance. Jasper from Indiana. My Bible says there are eight people on the ark, but you said that the races were there. How many people by number are on the ark? Eight Adamic souls. That's Noah and his wife and his three sons and their wives, and they were a perfect generation. That's the generation through which Christ would come 
and two of all other flesh. Genesis 6 writes that they were placed on there, but there were only eight Adamic souls. Okay, uh, Millie from Pennsylvania, what scripture in the Bible says Jesus sets his feet on earth? What scripture does it say or talk about the rejuvenation of the earth? The rejuvenation you will find in Revelation chapter 21. You have to take it back to the Greek. Made new means rejuvenated. Made as new again. And Christ sets his feet on the earth. You can read it in many places in the word. I like one place in the New Testament in one you wouldn't expect it is Hebrews chapter 12 whereby it states there's coming a shaking. The second Adam is going to set, that's Christ, is going to set his feet on the earth and it's going to shake and tear up everything and you better be standing on the rock and that rock is Christ himself. Another place is, is that uh, you are told in Acts chapter 1 that he's going to come back exactly as he's left with his feet on Mount Olives and that's Mount Olives is where he will land. Well, how can you be so sure of that? Because uh, Zechariah chapter 14 makes it, I mean, it nails it. His feet touch the Mount of Olives and it busts a path open all the way across Kedron right up to the east gate and prepares a way. Okay, I mean, he's taken over from the false Messiah in a big way. Uh, Caroline from Illinois. My pastor said something wrong and I did not correct him. Is that the right to do? Isn't it wrong to argue with a pastor? Well, you can discuss with the pastor, but don't argue with him. Um, I, I never tell someone where they should go to church, uh, but most pastors, I, personally myself, I always open up at the end of a, lec of, of a, a meeting a lecture session to questions whereby people can ask me for documentation. Why did you teach that? Or what does this mean? Or what does that mean? And, and it would be well, I think it would be wonderful if all pastors did that. Some will not. They're afraid to take questions because they're, I think, maybe, I don't know. Maybe they don't, they're not that familiar with the Word of God. I don't know. But they don't. Every pastor, but to put a pastor down, that's kind of, I think I would leave a church before I would actually put a pastor down. Um, no need, no, no gain there. So go ahead and plant your seed somewhere else. Kevin from Kentucky. You speak about the Kenites. What is this? I know, I want to know if this is the black race. Absolutely, unequivocally not. They are, um, they are the sons of Cain. And Cain was um, uh, a child of Eve. And Eve was of Adam. And Adam means ruddy complected. So that's not black. Geraldine from Tennessee. Is there any verse in the Bible that talks about the birds that fell from the sky in Arkansas? There, there, there is. There's, there is. Uh, it's called uh, Luke 13. We just finished it the other day. What happened to those people that the Tower of Siloam fell on? There's 18 of them. Were they wickeder than anybody else? No, they were just there when the tower fell. Well, what about the birds? Were those the most wicked birds in the world? They're out of BB that were flying along. No, they were birds out of BB, which we had tremendous hurricane, I mean tornadoes in this area. And three people died about 30 miles south of here because it was one fantastic storm. I mean, it wind up in the hundreds, uh, 130, 40, 50 miles an hour. And it took three lives and destroyed uh, uh, Cincinnati. But it was all over our little Ozark Mountains. And these birds who got caught up in it and probably shoved you know, a hail cloud, as you heard me explain the other day, it, it, lets the, it goes up and then your droplet falls, freezes, and gains a layer. And the air is so strong, it sucks it back up again and it makes it and it falls through with another layer and it gets bigger and bigger as it falls each time. But it'll take them up as high as 30,000 feet and there's no oxygen up there. And there's a lot of ice. 
And when those birds got into that cloud and it took them up and bounced around with the hail, birds are kind of sensitive. So they, they, but they weren't bad birds, they were just dead birds, okay? It happens, stuff happens. Wrong place and so forth. Uh, okay, Susan from Ohio. Question for Pastor Murray. What are apologetics? Um, um, showing the realization of um, uh, and regret for a fault, I would say. Okay, it's an apology. Barbara from uh, Delaware. What are the words you need to say if you want to baptize another person and you don't belong to a church? If you're a Christian, you can baptize another Christian and you baptize them in the name of our Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And uh, that, what it symbolizes is the fact that you believe publicly that Christ went into the tomb, meaning under the, when you go under the water, but that he resurrected. And you're declaring that publicly. Uh, B from Connecticut. About a month ago, I called in to ask a question about remarriage. If both partners caused the divorce, we have repented. When, when you repent, that's what did we read in today? Seven times 70, 490 times. If divorce is not the unpardonable sin. Adultery is not the unpardonable sin. Do not put yourself on a guilt trip. You have repented. You love the Lord. Go in peace and be happy. That's the beauty of Christianity is God's love and forgiveness. Um, I, I know some wouldn't disagree with that, but then they're not very good Christians, are they? because that's one of the best, wonderful, most beautiful parts of Christianity is God's love and forgiveness. Mary from Louisiana, what does God consider righteous acts? Well, it can, it can be many things. It can be studying his word whereby you can share a, a little truth to a lost soul. It can, it can be a smile that a person that may be so depressed, there, no telling what their thoughts and mind is, and that smile might pick them up you know, and, and so forth. Right place, right time, and in good taste. Uh, righteous acts are many things. It's doing what is right. That's what righteousness means, is what is right. And that, that is the only thing you can take with you according to Revelation chapter 14, verse 13. Your works, your righteous acts, and that's what weaves the fine linen you wear in heaven. More righteous acts, nicer robes. Uh, Lorraine from California, my grandmother told me you said that Jesus was conceived on the 25th of December, not born, but conceived. Can you explain that? Well, it's, it's quite, uh, uh, it's easy to explain. Uh, ordered the tape called Christmas Question and it kind of goes into the course of Abaya in which Zachariah, Elizabeth's husband, uh, served. That's a date. Okay, he's the, the Abaya is the eighth course out of the 24, and it has a specific time that it serves, and, um, and it does go into that date. Your grandmother also, when does your soul go to heaven? The instant you pass away, the soul goes instantly to heaven, not years later, but instantly. Um, Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 6 and 7 documents that for you. Or... New Testament, verse, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 7 and 8. To be absent from this flesh body is to be present with the Lord. Uh, Charles from South Carolina. Did God create good and evil? If so, where in the Bible? He, he did not create evil. He allows, the only manuscript, he allows tumult. I mean, he will allow trouble to come up if you want it. If you... If you Pick it, if you like it, if you keep knocking around looking for trouble, you can find it. He allows it, but he did not create it. Man does, and Satan does. Kimberly from Georgia. Pastor Murray, you are a great teacher. Thank you. You're a good judge of character, all right? Uh, thank you. I am really confused about everyone saying that we will be sucked up into the sky. Can you please explain what this means? Does this mean we will have a nuclear war? Absolutely not. 
We are not going to have a nuclear war. And Christ is coming here to establish his kingdom. We're not going to be sucked up anywhere. That's false teaching. That's what will cause people to worship the Antichrist. When they say that, do not go. Or you would end up in Satan's camp. You don't want to go there. Keep studying. You're doing good. You're getting a good start. Cindy from Alabama, please explain what the millennium is. The word millennium means a thousand years, and if you read 2 Peter chapter 3, verses 7 and 8, you find out how long a day is with God. So a thousand years. So it's what is known as the Lord's day. That's when he's going to take name and he's going to kick dragon. That's when we're going to assist him. We're going to try to save as many people that never had an opportunity to know truth. And then comes the great white throne judgment and the second death, which is to say hell. Barbara from Alabama, where are Adam's other children? Why are Adam's other children not listed in his genealogy? They weren't his kids. All of Adam's children are listed in his genealogy except Abel, and Abel was already dead. So there was no progeny, so he's not listed. Why he's dead? But all the other people were not Adam's uh, children, okay? They belong to somebody else. End of story. All right, hey, we're out of time. I love you all because you enjoy studying our Father's Word. Most of all, God loves you for it. You know why? It makes his day when you read the letter he has written you chapter by chapter and verse by verse. And when you make his day, boy, is he going to make yours. It pleases him. Don't, and always thank him. When, when he shows you a truth, thank him for it. It's blessed, okay. Now, we're brought to you by your tithes and offerings. If we have helped you, and only if we've helped you, you help us keep coming to you. Once you do that, you bless God. He will always bless you. Most important, though, you listen to me. Listen good. Now, you stay in his word every day. In his word is a good day, even with trouble. You know why? Because Jesus, Yeshua, is the living word. Hearing God's word with understanding will change your life. We hope you have enjoyed studying God's Word here on the Shepherd's Chapel Family Bible Study Hour with Pastor Arnold Murray. If you would like to receive more information concerning Shepherd's Chapel, you may request our free introductory offer. Our introductory offer contains the Mark of the Beast audio tape, our monthly newsletter with a written Bible study, a tape catalog, and a list of written reference works available through Shepherd's Chapel. To request our free introductory offer by telephone, call 800-643-4645, 24 hours a day. You may also request our introductory offer by writing to Shepherd's Chapel, Post Office Box 416, Gravit, Arkansas, 72736. Once again, that's Shepherd's Chapel, Post Office Box 416, Gravit, Arkansas. 72736. We invite you to join us for the next in-depth Bible study each weekday at this same time. Thank you for watching today's program and God bless you.